evening uh, to everyone present here. Uh, we shall uh, proceed our discussion and uh, start the seven week lecture. Okay. So this week uh, we shall be going uh, and discussing about basically uh, the concrete batching and uh, about the mixing, how it affects the properties of concrete and what is its uh, what are its criteria which uh, help in uh, defining uh, the application of special concrete apart from that we will go through uh, how uh, how to apply those uh, mixing and batching techniques in short critting okay and also we will uh, find out uh, what is high strength concrete uh, that is a special concrete and how is it different from normal concrete so let us begin so uh, what is concrete batching? Uh, it is basically the process of measuring concrete mix ingredients by either mass or volume and introducing them into the mixture. For producing concrete of uniform quality, the ingredients must be measured accurately for each batch. Most specifications require that batching be done by mass rather than by volume as per ASTM C94 or ASHTO M1557. The, basically the US codes. Water and liquid admixtures can be measured accurately by either volume or mass. Volumetric batching is used for concrete mixed in continuous mixtures. So if we see the accuracy okay, for the materials, considered materials, we will see that they range between plus minus 1 to 3 percent. Okay, uh, More accuracy is required in terms of measuring the cementitious material and water and uh, you know uh, for Aggregates and admixtures, uh, the uh, the error can be uh, little error is allowed. Okay, more error is allowed uh, from plus minus two percent to uh, plus minus three percent. Okay, so the equipment should be capable of measuring quantities with do these tolerances for all types of batches. The accuracy of scales and batching equipment should be checked periodically and adjusted as and when required. Uh, the liquid chemical admixture should be added as aqueous solutions. The volume of liquid, if significant, should be adjusted against quantity of mixing water. Admixtures that cannot be added in solution can be either batched by mass or volume as recommended by the manufacturer. Admixture dispensers should be checked frequently. Errors in dispensing admixtures can lead to serious problems in both fresh and hardened concrete. So, basically, uh, if we talk about mixers, there are basically two types of mixers. One is batch mixers and one is continuous mixers. Okay, We will go to, uh, uh, in detail about all of them in the coming slides. If we classify uh, batch mixers, they are basically, uh, they can be classified into drum mixers and pan mixers. Okay, the Drum mixers again uh, are, uh, are of three types basically. One is non-tilting, one is reversing and one is tilting. Uh, we basically use the tilting mixer. Okay, So let us go and discuss all uh, in detail now so what is batch mixer basically so it produces concrete one batch at a time it needs to be emptied completely after each mixing cycle uh, cleaned if possible and reloaded with the materials for the next batch of concrete okay there are two main types that can be distinguished by the orientation of the axis of rotation that is horizontal or incline which are drum mixers okay and vertical okay which is pen mixers we shall discuss everything, every every type in detail. Okay, so uh, the drum mixers have a drum basically with fixed blades. Okay, also known as shaft. Okay, rotating around its axis. Okay, the pan mixers may have either the blades or the pan rotating around the axis. So you know, uh, basically all of, all of them have are of the same type. Only the issue is of orientation. Drum, it is mainly inclined or horizontal, and in pen, it is completely vertical. Okay, so if we see this case, uh, this uh, sketch, okay, we see cross section of drum mixers. So, this is basically the tilting axis, and this is the axis of rotation. Okay, so if the input and exit of the concrete are from the same, uh, same inlet, okay, so uh, inlet and outlet is the same, okay. So that is basically the uh, tilting and reversing one. And if the exit and input are different, okay, so then it is the non-tilting drum, okay. So all the drum mixers have a container with a cross section as shown in figure. 
the blades are attached to the inside of the movable drum okay so here are the blades present the main purpose is to lift the materials lift the materials as the drum rotates each rotation the lifted material drops back into the mixture at the bottom of the drum and the cycle starts again so this is the continuous process that will go okay the parameters that can be controlled are basically the rotation speed of the drum angle of inclination of the rotation axis so basically two okay two main parameters one is speed of rotation and second is angle of inclination there are three main types of drum mixers okay as we just discussed one is non tilting drum one is reversing drum and one is tilting drum and we as i did as i said before we mainly use the tilting drum so this is basically uh, the sketch of the non tilting drum so if you see here the non the non tilting drum mixer implies that the orientation of the drum is fixed okay so we can move it that's why it is non tilting the materials are added at one end and discharged at the other as you can see from the right side we have to input the materials and from the left side the concrete is exit okay exited and uh, you know uh, during mixing time it is closed and when we have to discharge it is exit uh, the the close uh, gate is open okay so that is all about non tilting drum in case of reversing drums it is almost similar to the non tilting non tilting uh, mixer but the difference is the basic difference is the same opening is used to add the constituents and also to discharge concrete okay the drum rotates in one direction for mixing and in the opposite direction for discharging the concrete there are two types of blades attached to the inner walls of the drum okay so one is for mixing and other one is for discharging okay so one rotates in one direction and the other rotates in the opposite direction so uh, one set drags the concrete upwards and toward the center of the mixture when the drum rotates in one direction and the second set of blades pushes the concrete toward the opening when the drum rotates in the other direction okay so these are some of the uh, criteria uh, which have to be in mind and uh, these are the definitions basically okay and the blades have a spiral arrangement okay to obtain the desired effect for discharge and mixing okay the reversing drum mixers are usually used uh, for batches up to 1 meter cube so basically for 1 meter cube volume the reversing drum mixers can be used okay now let us go to the you know the commonly used one which is the tilting drum so in this case the inclination can be varied okay and uh, here the tilting drum also as as we discussed uh, in uh, here the input opening and the discharge opening are basically the same like the reverse drum reversing drum when the drum is almost horizontal that is inclination equal to 0 degree more energy is provided to the concrete because more concrete is lifted okay to the full diameter of the drum before dropping okay it is during the drop that the concrete is kneaded and mixed okay therefore the higher the drop the higher the energy imparted to the concrete okay so if the axis of rotation is almost vertical okay which is in the case of uh, the pan okay pan mixer the blades cannot leave the concrete and the concrete is not well mixed so that is the issue uh, of having vertical okay so being vertical it is not possible to lift the concrete basically okay the drum axis usually stays at an angle of about 15 degree okay from horizontal during the mixing so that is at this at this uh, orientation the mixing basically occurs okay so as you can see here so if we see uh, in when the filling of the mixer takes place so it is around uh, a slight more angle inclination say let's say it is around 45 degree okay so load is entered then and in the case of mixing the axis of orientation uh, is uh, you know it is inclined about 15 degree to the horizontal so that is an optimum uh, angle for filling as mixing respectively okay so uh, for discharging the concrete uh, the drum is tilted downwards below the horizontal plane okay the tilting drum is the most common type of drum mixer for small batches which are less than 0.5 meter cube both in the laboratory and the field as i told you uh, we generally require uh, the batches uh, for batching we mainly use uh, point less than 0.5 meter cube volume the drums so basically tilting drum is used if uh, more than 0.5 and about 1 meter cube is used uh, uh, like is the requirement so then we go for reversing drum okay so because then uh, tilting uh, too much tilting may be a problem okay so this is the sketch of discharging the mixer and this is the cross section of the tilting mixer
so that is mainly about the drums okay now let us go to the pen pen mixture so in the pen mixture okay so in the pen mixture what we will see is that a cylindrical pen okay which is either at a fixed or rotating uh, position it contains the concrete to be mixed so this is the basically the pen the big circle so here one or two sets of blades rotate okay inside the pen to mix the materials and a blade scraps the wall of the pen so this blade is basically the shaft okay and this blade basically is the scraper okay so this is the scraper and this is the shaft okay so the sh shapes of the blades and the axis of the rotation vary the other element of the mixer is the scraper as i told you this is the scraper so sometimes the axis of rotation of the blades coincides with the pen axis so all are uh, you know all are motored differently the you know say the electricity connection for all the three parts are different as we will find later so that's why according to its optimum uh, performance uh, their design so if you see in this case it is a center shaft okay where the pen is fixed so this is fixed not rotating whereas the scraper is moving okay so that that is this case in the second case if we will see we will see it is also a center shaft it is present in the center but the pen is rotating here whereas the scrap is not rotating scraper is not rotating so there are two types as discussed so other pen mixers have the axis offset planetary motion mixer and counter current motion so as you can see here it is not center shaft okay so one is counter current motion and one is planetary motion in this cases there are two rotations the blades rotate around their axis and around the axis of the pen okay so blades rotate both around their own axis and along the around the axis of the pen so it will rotate here also and it will rotate here also okay so two rotations are going on so if you see uh, in this case it is called the counter current motion okay so it is because the pen is rotating okay the scraper is fixed okay and the chef is also rotating uh, following arrow 2 so it is rotating like this also and like this also so it is counter current motion whereas in the case of planetary motion the pen is fixed it is not moving the scraper is moving okay the shaft is also rotating okay and it is also following arrow 2 okay so basically uh, in counter current motion uh, the pen is rotating whereas in the planetary motion the pen is fixed okay other possibility is to have two shafts okay so Two, uh, one more condition can be using two type of shafts if it is not a center shaft okay so other possibility is having two shafts that rotate in a synchronized manner okay like screws okay a blade is suspended at an angle near the inner wall of the pan to scrape the concrete as you can see here that tends to stagnate uh, near the wall of the pan from the wall and to push it inward so that it encounters the rotating blades okay so if some in the wall if some concrete is getting stuck okay so the scraper will try to move that and put it uh, and give it to the uh, the shafts okay so that they can work upon that so this is an example of dual shaft okay so where the pen is fixed okay the scraper is moving and also the shafts are moving in a synchronized motion okay if the pen is rotating the scraper can simply be fixed that is suspended near the wall of the pen and not moving so if the pen is moving the scraper is not required to move okay if the pen is fixed the scraper must move to push concrete toward the blades and the opposite is also true if the pen is fixed the scraper should move okay usually the individual moving parts that is the blades that is this one the pen that is the hole and the scraper that this is are independently powered as i told you all are connected differently so that uh, you know by setting the various speeds and motions and directions the optimized performance can be found out okay so as you can see here it is a dual shaft where pen is fixed and scraper is moving so now let us go to the continuous mixers type okay so in this case the materials are continuously fed into the mixture at the same rate okay as the concrete is discharged they are usually non tilting tilting drums with screw type blades rotating in the middle of the drum the drum is tilted downward toward the discharge opening. The mixing time is determined by the slope of the drum, which is again taken about 15 degree. Okay. So these mixtures are used for applications that require a short working time, long unloading time, remote sites, and small deliveries. Okay. So they are not suitable for ready mix. Okay. 
a major use of these types of mixtures is for low slum type of concretes okay due to the short mixing time okay the air content is not easily controlled even with the addition of air entering admixtures so this, this is one of the anomaly of continuous mixture okay because the short mixing time is present air content is uh, not easily controlled because of which the properties may vary even with the addition of air entering admixture okay so if we see here okay basically the mixing schedule and the uh, plot of solid components content with time we will see that during dry mixing there is a little increase of the component okay till water is added okay after that the constituents are again mixed so it gets increased and you know finally uh, after complete uh, pouring of water and adding okay so the loading period is fixed okay uh, finished and then starts the mixing period okay which is again uh, the time uh, almost the same time as the loading period and it is at the maximum the uh, solid co uh, components after which uh, the comp uh, the mixing uh, finishes and the concrete is discharged okay so at this uh, as the discharging period starts the solid components are again uh, reduced because the concrete is pumped or uh, you know discharged okay it's output okay so uh, if we go to mixing concrete okay so concrete should be mixed thoroughly until it is uniform in appearance with all ingredients evenly distributed okay mixtures should not be loaded above their rated capacities and should be operated at a mixing speed recommended by the manufacturer increased output should be obtained by using a larger mixer or additional mixers rather than by speeding up or overloading the equipment on hand okay so that will damage the equipment also and it will also result in an improper and non-homogeneous mix so if the blades of a mixer become worn or coated with hardened concrete mixing action will be less efficient okay less efficient so efficiency will be a question if it if the if the blades are not proper okay it gets worn off or coated okay with hardened concrete if concrete has been adequately mixed samples taken from different portions of a batch will have essentially the same density air content slump and coarse aggregate content so this is obvi obvious if it is mixed uh, adequately concrete will be homogeneous therefore all the basic properties like density air content slum coarse aggregate content everything will be same from wherever we take it out okay so in the case of stationary mixing okay so the concrete is mixed at site in a stationary mixer or a paving mixer stationary mixers include both on-site mixers and central mixers in ready mix concrete plants they are available in sizes up to 9 meter cube and can be of the tilting or non-tilting type or the open top revolving blade or pedal type. All types may be equipped with loading skips and some are equipped with a swinging discharge chute. Okay? Many stationary mixers have timing devices, some of which can be set for a given mixing time and locked so that the batch cannot be discharged until the designated mixing time has elapsed. So various types of stationary mixers have arrived in the market today. Many specifications require a minimum mixing time of 1 minute plus 15 seconds for every cubic meter unless mixer performance tests demonstrate that shorter periods are acceptable and will provide a uniform concrete mixture. Okay? Short mixing times can result in non-homogeneous mixtures, poor distribution of air voids resulting in poor frost resistance, poor strain gain and early stiffening problems. So some of the problems with short mixing. Okay? The mixing period should be measured from the time all cement and aggregates are in the mixture drum provided all the water is added before one fourth of the mixing time has elapsed. So mixing period basically starts uh, with the uh, you know pro mixing of cement and aggregates okay, in the mixture drum provided water is added before one fourth of the mixing time has completed. Okay? About 10% of the mixing water uh, we have to keep in mind should be placed in the drum before solid materials and uh, materials are added and also uh, you know 10% has to be added after all materials are in the drum so before uh, adding the solid materials and after adding the solid materials 10% 10% that is 20% of mix, mixing water should be managed okay so with the rest 80% we mix basically during the uh, you know adding of the materials 10% uh, should be uh, added before and 10% should be kept till the last okay when heated water is used in cold weather, this order of charging may require some modification to prevent possible rapid stiffening due to high rate of hydration, okay, when hot water contacts the cement. 
in this case addition of the cementitious materials should be delayed until most of the aggregate and water have been mixed well in the drum okay so these are some of the uh, you know criteria or uh, precautions that have to be kept in mind okay where the mixer is charged directly from a batch plant the material should be added simultaneously at such rates that the charging time is about the same for all materials okay if supplementary cementing materials are used they should be added after the cement okay if retard retarding or water reducing admixtures okay are used they should be added in the same sequence okay uh, in the charging cycle each time okay so these are some of the uh, criteria okay which have to be uh, kept in mind okay and uh, if not uh, significant variations in the time of initial setting and percentage of entry near may result okay so if the if the routine is not followed okay if the routine is not parallel similar and uh, you know consistent okay then significant variations in the time of initial setting and percentage of entry near may result okay so first we have to add cement uh, basically first we have to add the aggregates uh, okay aggregates then we have to add cement okay and uh, before that 10 percent has to be uh, water has to be added and during mixing uh, the water has to be added in uh, plan sequence and after the cement we have to go for water reducing admixture and supplementary cementitious materials okay but in a proper sequence okay which should not be altered okay so addition of the admixture should be completed not later than one minute after addition of water to the cement has been completed or prior to the start of the last three fourths of the mixing cycle whichever occurs first okay so this has to be kept in mind okay if two or more admixtures are used in the same batch of concrete they should be added separately this is intended to avoid any interaction that might interfere with the efficiency of any of the admixtures and adversely affect the concrete properties so these factors need to be kept in mind okay uh, so that it does not have any adverse effect okay the sequence in which they are added to the mix can be important too so as we discussed it is a very prime uh, importance now let us go for ready mix concrete okay ready mix concrete is proportioned and mixed of the project side and is delivered to the construction area in a freshly mixed and unhardened state okay it can be manufactured by any of the following methods okay so one is the central mix concrete one is string mix concrete and one is truck mix concrete okay so basically in central mix concrete it is mixed completely in a stationary mixer and is delivered either in a agitator truck a mixer truck operating at agitating speed or a non agitating truck okay so any uh, truck can be used but it is mixed completely at the site itself in case of string mix concrete okay it is mixed partially in the stationary mixer that is at the uh, the batching site and other the rest mixing is completed in a truck mixer okay and in the case of trucks, truck mix concrete, complete mixing occurs in the truck mixer itself. Okay, so basically these three other types of ready mix concrete mixing. So let us now go to the mixing energy. The energy needed to mix a concrete batch is determined by the product of the power. Okay, power consumed during a mixing cycle and the duration of the cycle. So the product of power and duration gives the energy. Okay. Uh, um, for example, a mixer that has a powerful motor, okay, that can be used to mix less workable or high viscosity concretes, okay, because it is more powerful. Whereas in the uh, whereas in the case of you know a less power mixer, powerful mixer, it can be used, okay, for uh, you know mixing more workable concrete, okay, because less power is required. So like this, uh, you know, although uh, although one one can be used for high viscous or less workable and one can be used for more workable but if you see both can have the same mixing energy because it is ultimately the product of power and duration okay so uh, that is all about mixing okay so now let us go to pre-mixing okay so even before mixing what uh, uh, criteria should be kept in mind so uh, if we go to lightweight aggregates so if porous or lightweight aggregates that displays high absorption characteristics are used it is recommended that half to 2 by 3 of the total mixing water should be pre-mixed with the aggregate itself for 1.5 to 3 minutes okay pre-mixing fills the pores of cellular particles before cement is added preventing dry cement from being wasted in the pores so that is one of its use okay pre-mixing okay so 
it fills the pores of cellular particles uh, before cement is added okay uh, through because of the addition of aggregates so fine and uh, coarse and that does not allow dry cement from being wasted in the pores okay heavy aggregates uh, before weight is added before sorry before water is added it is good practice to dry mix heavy aggregates with cement for approximately one minute or until the mass is uniform in color so basically in the case of lightweight aggregates one half to two by three of the total mixing water okay uh, should be premixed with the aggregate itself before uh, mixing of cement takes place okay so in order to preserve cement from being wasted in the pores and in the case of heavy aggregates okay so there uh, dry mix heavy aggregates should be added with cement for approximately one minute so that the mass is uniform in color before water is being added okay it is opposite okay so uh, what is the order of adding materials okay so basically the most common sequence is, is an uh, initial dry mix cycle followed by a final wet mix cycle as we saw in the diagram okay first coarse and fine aggregates are checked for moisture content weight then introduced into the mixture as i told you if an air entraining admixture is necessary okay it is introduced with the aggregates itself okay then cementitious ingredients are weighed and added to the mix in the most common mix designs the initial dry mix cycle plans a homogeneous mixture in about 30 seconds okay after the mixing initial cycle is complete other mix admixtures and the remaining water are added and mixed the second time okay so two times are uh, followed okay then the weight cycles fi final mix time depends on the eff efficiency of the mixer okay if admixtures are not sequenced properly they could have no effect or worse their period of uh, effectiveness may occur too early or too late which could be det detrimental to the concrete so the adding sequence is very much important in case of admixtures reactive air and training okay uh, reactive air entraining uh, this one uh, admixtures okay should be introduced into the mix separately okay without touching other admixtures okay so uh, so basically if we see the reactive air entraining admixture should be introduced into the mix separately without touching other admixtures they are discharged onto the aggregates okay or entered into the mix water early and their doses may change if they are using cold weather or hot water okay so these are some of the uh, criteria okay these are some of the criteria uh, which ne which need to be checked okay which need to be checked and uh, kept in mind when uh, you know preparing okay so that uh, you know uh, actual uh, desired result is obtained okay in a practical sense so these are some of the criteria we need to keep in mind okay so water reducing admixtures are added after the cement is wetted okay the earlier they are added the longer the mix will hold slum and the easier it will be to distribute throughout the mix but more chemicals are necessary so it is a catchy situation so if we use the water reducing admixture early so it will hold more slum and it will be easier to distribute throughout the mix but it will require more chemicals that is cost will be high however if added later the mix won't hold slum as long but lower doses can be used making them more cost effective in the other case if uh, the water reducing admixture is you know added in a later time the mix won't hold slum as much long as desired but because uh, because of later addition lower doses can be used thereby making it efficient effective okay economical liquid pigments are typically introduced at the beginning of the final cycle okay with other admixtures so this is all about batching mixing okay types of mixer and uh, the order of adding materials okay now let us go to a special concrete which is short grid okay so what is short grid uh, short grid is basically a concrete delivered to the final point of placing in a sealed pressure resistant hose or pipe and applied by spring okay so with this basically as we have i think discussed uh, last classes so it does not uh, it it contains more amount of finer materials okay so fine which is uh, passing 0.125 mm okay concrete requires no formwork in this case and it is self compacting in nature okay this is some of its advantages 
so as we have discussed initially also basically process the steps of concrete okay concrete uh, uh, you know manufacturing concrete developing concrete are the following batching mixing transporting placing compacting and curing okay so these are the steps in concrete construction uh, what as we also have studied uh, what is the difference between normal and special concrete so in in these steps okay there is a certain range of the variables over which the operation process can be called normal okay if any of the processes go out of range or another special process become <coughs> sorry if any of the standard processes okay go out of range or another another special process become involved so that then the concrete has to be treated as a special concrete okay so as you can see in this picture okay so it is the pouring of the short grid in tunnel okay heavy construction and here uh, you you can see uh, the shear strength okay that is the uh, you know uh, resistance against sliding failure uh, in the case of short grid okay so here it is the short grid which is used for slope protection here you can see hexagonal wire mesh okay which can be used uh, for so improving more giving more shear strength okay to the short grid so this they have used some uh, processes for you know uh, and uh, coined the uh, you know coined the uh, technique as power short grid okay so here they have uh, sh sh applied short grid in uh, panels okay short gridding has been done in panels as you can see so basically short grid is also known as gunite okay so the basic applications of short gridding are in bridges, dams, sewer, that is sanitary storm culverts, basins, head walls, wing walls, etc., pyres, docks, ditches, retaining walls, slip slope st uh, stabilization, all of them use short gridding. Okay. So properties of the short grid as placed, okay, depend not only on the material proportions, etc., but also on the skill of the nozzleman, that is the work workmanship. Okay. So uh, not only the material proportions play a role, also the skill of the person okay who is handling the nozzle okay uh, or spraying the concrete he also the, his skill also his or her skill also plays an important role in other words workmanship is of critical importance is a in a quality control plan okay so in principle short grid can be placed using dry mix process and wet mix process okay so these are the main two processes using which short gridding can be done okay so uh, in the dry mix process, okay, what is happen is cement, moist sand, and coarse aggregates, okay, which are optional again because it consists of a more of finer material, okay. So in this case, dry mix case, uh, the premix blend of dry cement and aggregate is propelled through a hose, okay, and uh, you know by using compressed air, okay, and it is uh, you know uh, uh, it is uh, flown through the nozzle, okay. So water is added, okay, in the mixture uh, at the nozzle at the st at the stage of nozzle only, okay, and the mixed ingredients are projected onto the application surface. So basically, dry mix basically means that leaving water, everything is uh, processed, mixed initially, and then it is delivered using a hose and compressed air, uh, in compressed air using a hose to the nozzle where water is kept under pressure and mixed, and then it is directly sprayed. As a short grid okay in the case of wet mix process okay the water is not kept at nozzle okay it is directly mixed initially with cement sand and aggregate so uh, you know in this case short grid in which all ingredients except accelerator okay are mixed before introduction into the delivery hose before delivery hose only everything is mixed so that is called the wet mix process and in this case accelerator if accelerator if used is added at the nozzle in place of the water for dry mix case okay so here accelerator is used uh, is added at the nose if used is added at the nozzle in a manner that the quantity can be regulated and monitored okay so that is basically the difference between dry mix and wet mix process so given the method of placing short grid ingredients are also at times pre-baked okay so they can be also uh, you know uh, batched in bags itself okay so that's why you know batching at place at site is not required they can be uh, you know they can be uh, they can be directly measured and you know bags can be made directly okay so that you can directly open the bag and make the short grid okay but the ingredients can also be batched and mixed in the usual manner that is at the place at the place of construction
or mixing okay so it can be pre-bake also or it can be batch and mix in the usual manner also on the location itself so given the nature of the construction fiber reinforced short grid is an excellent op option so fiber reinforced concrete uh, short grid sorry uh, is also a uh, good option uh, depending on the nature of construction okay it will basically add the shear strength so now let us see the materials and properties no special material as such except the care uh, has to be taken in choosing cement or segregate uh, chemical admixtures and fibers if added okay so no special material uh, you know except from cement core segregate chemical admixture and fibers okay uh, okay no special material or care has to be taken okay so quality control uh, is basically carried out on the basis of compressive tensile flexural strength or any other relevant parameter depending upon the specific application so these are some of the uh, criteria through which uh, we can uh, you know we can, we can follow for short grading okay so what are the characteristics of short grid so it has a lower water cement ratio especially in the dry process it has a high early strength and uh, accelerators can be used the rebound of material after placement okay so the compaction due to application with high speeds that is uh, there reduce cost on account of savings from formwork so it is one of its advantages it is ideally suited for thin layers okay it cannot be placed in thick layers at least in a single pass okay so there uh, there may be problems of segregation and uh, other problems so because the shear is important shear strength so it is mainly suitable for thin layers okay with reinforcement so now let us go to curing short grid so short grid could be cured continuously by maintaining the moist condition okay the following methods may be used basically for moist uh, for curing okay and that in, in the case of short grading so one is ponding or continuous sprinkling of water uh, sorry four four ways can be used for curing one is ponding or continuous sprinkling of water second is covering with a mat or sand that is kept wet third is covering with impervious sheet material okay and fourth is using curing compounds okay if relative humidity is uh, having a value higher than 95 percent then the external curing requirements can be reviewed because the condition atmosphere environment has itself a high level of humidity so in that case uh, it can be external curing can be relaxed to a certain extent so now let us see what is fiber reinforced short grid so steel synthetic fibers dispersed homogeneously in short grid in this case it imparts sufficient ductility okay they have become cost competitive with other forms of reinforcement coming into the market and they impart better safety and easy to use benefits than the traditional reinforcements so all uh, all various types of advantages are you uh, advantages are there for using fiber reinforced short grid okay so now how to determine the strength of short, uh, concrete uh, in the case of short grid okay so in for that case we first you know spray a panel of uh, short grid okay we prepare a panel using short gridding so we need to standard standardize the size including thickness of deposit number of layers okay uh, then uh, this one uh, for the deposit okay angles distance from the nozzle okay curing regime for panel etc so we have we have to standardize everything and then we have to take some cores okay we have to extract some cores from the panel uh, like this as shown here and we have to test the cores for the certain uh, criteria and see whether those are uh, the values are coming uh, in the acceptable limits as per the standard codes okay so this has been mentioned in ASTM and us 2 codes which we can follow okay so how this short grading can be useful we can see here so they, here they have given an example of how rehabilitation of corrugated steel pipe has been done so this is a corrugated okay uh, this one uh, the shape is irregular irregular shape steel pipe okay so here if you can see uh, this corrugated wavy type uh, steel pipe so it, it got corroded okay before rehabilitation so uh, after using short critting okay it became like this okay so like this it it was restored okay so it was uh, re-strengthened okay then 
here they have uh, you can see here uh, this is a brick sewer okay which again got corroded and uh, you know it was uh, it got damaged so they are also short because of short treating app uh, application they were able to rehabilitate okay and it is looking much stronger now so here they have rehabilitated a bridge okay using short treating okay here you can see uh, they have used short treating for seismic retrofitting also okay so they have re-strengthened uh, the structural members without replanning or re or you know remaking uh, the entire uh, entire part okay so renovation without renovation only uh, they were able to strengthen uh, existing uh, stru structural material uh, member so yeah so this is the use of short fitting so in the case of retaining retaining wall also they were able to uh, using short fit they were able to rehabilitate the wall as you can see here before and after and here in this case you can see uh, the retaining wall here uh, which again uh, was rehabilitated okay so this was the initial case and after rehabilitation using short grid it this is the final okay so therefore we can say that short grading has various applications okay uh, but it depends on the material proportions and the skill of the nozzle man okay so workmanship is also a very important criteria now let us go to one of uh, one more special concrete okay which is uh, you know also known as high strength concrete okay so let us see uh, which is a future you know futuristic concrete okay which has applications in various uh, mega structures okay such as Burj Khalifa so they use uh, they have used high strength concrete okay so why what is high strength okay how is it different from normal strength how is it special let us see now so high strength concrete basically does not have any basic definition okay like what do you, what do you mean by high strength uh, there is no proper definition okay as per is 456 uh, 2000 it mentions that high strength is anything uh, from m80 to m100 okay so more than 80 they have termed as high strength okay other than that uh, as we know standard is from 40 to m40 to m75 and ordinary ordinary is m m10 to m35 however in case of uh, is 10262 that is a quote for mixed design there they have mentioned anything above 65 to be high strength concrete so there is no proper definition as to what is high strength okay and you know well, that is also partly because specifications defines characteristic strength as the main parameter on the basis of test of cylinder and cubes and they both have different they give both different values okay and therefore the grade cannot be directly compared only on numbers there are some other parameters which have also need to be uh, incorporated okay before uh, giving a proper definition to high strength concrete okay so uh, in the high strength concrete the transition zone and the mortar phases in high strength concrete are quite strong okay so the therefore as they, those are quite strong or need to be quite strong the coarse aggregates themselves should be chosen very carefully okay in terms of strength grading and alkali reactivity so these three parameters they take a very important role while choosing the coarse aggregate okay strength of concrete tends to reduce as the maximum size of aggregates increases okay so more is the aggregate size lesser will be the strength because of the increasing of the transition zone okay so more is the transition zone uh, more is the chance of uh, failure okay so that's why the less should be the aggregate size okay or a limit should be there in the aggregate size for accumulating the maximum strength okay so as you can see in this picture only uh, this is the transition zone this is the paste this is these are the aggregates this is the chs gel and inside these are the various types of pores such as capillary gel pores etc etc so we have discussed all of them in the previous classes okay so now let us see uh, the considerations okay in general there are no differences in the raw materials used to make normal strength concrete nsc and high strength concrete hsc okay so in general the raw materials are almost the same okay so more stringent quality control and more care in the selection of materials are needed that is the basic difference in hsc and nsc okay so more quality control quality control and selection of materials is more stringent more strict okay in high strength okay so the range is quite less and it has to be very specific okay for the case of aggregate for the aggregate to be used in making high strength concrete it is better to choose one with a high crushing strength if possible so high crushing strength uh, aggregate is of much importance 
in case of high strain concrete okay the maximum size of aggregate is usually limited to 20 mm the limitation on maximum aggregate size is to reduce the influence of the transition zone and to get a more homogeneous material so as i told you just before uh, just the last slide so more the maximum aggregate size is related with the transition zone so more is the aggregate size greater will be the transition zone which is the weak, weakest point of the concrete so more is the weakest point weaker will be the strength also therefore to limit the transition zone uh, the aggregate size is also limited okay and that will also allow for a more homogeneous material and more is the homogeneity better will be the even strength okay so uh, in the case of aggregate with a smaller size of coarse aggregate okay the demand for a high mortar or paste content also increases so if it is limited okay the coarse aggregate content is limited naturally the high the mortar content will uh, its demand will definitely increase okay the concrete becomes more homogeneous also in the absence of larger coarse aggregate and a narrower difference between strength of coarse aggregate and mortar mix is observed okay so because the content of mortar is increased okay so therefore the strength will also be increasing and therefore the difference between coarse aggregate and the mortar will decrease okay so that is mainly about coarse aggregate now let us see what is what are the implications of cement content in high strength concrete so the cement content is usually high okay because the mortar content is increased therefore the cement content will also be higher so its range is between 400 to 600 kg per meter cube okay higher cement content is the result of limiting the maximum aggregate size which it discussed and a need for workability under the water cement ratio condition okay so both needs to be observed okay and because of that uh, this one the cement content will be higher okay higher cement content also leads to a more homogeneous concrete okay so because it will be more uniform in nature so increasing the cement content can also increase the total amount of water okay because we have to uh, maintain the w by c ratio okay use in the concrete mix and provide more paste for the lubrication effect which leads to an enhanced workability okay so it will more water will lead to lubrication okay also we will be using water reducing admixture also so that will lead to more workability frequently water reducing admixtures and mineral admixtures such as fly ash slag and silica fume are incorporated in the mix for high strength concrete so main uh, main water reducing mixtures and uh, you know mainly water reducing mixtures and uh, mineral admixtures okay which are mainly fly ash slag silica fume they are you know incorporated in the high strength concrete mixes okay so water cement ratio if we go into uh, as we know uh, as we have just uh, might have discussed so basic measure usually taken in making high strength concrete is to reduce the water cement or water binder ratio so water content is slow okay uh, low okay so to you know to balance that okay uh, they mainly use the admixtures okay the which can be either chemical or mineral so uh, you know hsc has a redu reduced water cement or water binder ratio from that from that of the values of normal strength concrete a low water cement or water binder ratio can lead to high compressive strength as we know from the abrams law water cement ratio is inversely proportional to compressive strength so lesser is the water cement ratio more will be the compressive strength okay water cement ratio for normal concrete is generally between 0.4 to 0.6 okay 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 is the range between uh, range for the normal concrete water cement ratio while for HSC high strength concrete it has to be lesser than 0.3 okay so uh, for HSC the water cement ratio is 0 0.3 or lesser okay which is at least 0 0.1 less than uh, the water cement ratio used for normal concrete okay so lowering the water cement or water binder ratio will lead, lead to the loss of workability definitely uh, it is obvious this advantage this advantage is overcome in concrete using proportions by adding super plasticizers okay so super plasticizers are used okay for taking into account that using uh, usual working principle of a super plasticizer is that a super plasticizer can separate cement particles from flocculation okay or combination and thus release the entrapped air okay oh sorry entrapped water by cement particle clusters either by electrostatic repulsion okay example sulfonate based or steric effect example polycarboxylate based polymer so there are some chemical phenomenon okay through which uh, the super plasticizer separates cement particles from flocculation or coming together agglomeration and thereby release the entrapped water between the cement particle clusters okay 
which uh, you know which increase the water free water uh, available for hydration okay and thereby increasing the workability because of the low water cement uh, ratio and the high cement content high strength concrete could have large autogenous shrinkage okay so this is because uh, the because the water okay uh, the, because of the hydration taking place uh, some amount of void okay uh, will be there because the water gets converted into hydration products which will lead to uh, you know uh, autogenous shrinkage because more cement is uh, present so more hydration will occur so more autogenous shrinkage will occur and second is the liberation of large amounts of heat of hydration it is because we all know cement is a exothermic process so more will be the cement content more will be the exothermic reaction and more is the exothermic reaction greater will be the heat of hydration okay the above could lead to cracking and special attention needs to be given to control of cracking in high strength concrete okay so these two uh, mainly results in cracking okay and therefore the durability aspect comes uh, very important becomes very important therefore special atten attention needs to be given for controlling the cracking in high strength concrete okay cracking is harmful for water tightness durability etc which we just mentioned uh, discussed strength of concrete in the structure itself is of concern okay given the difference in curing regime scale of casting etc so all these factors yeah, needs to be noted down okay so now let us see one of the may, one of the more important uh, constituent of high strength concrete apart from the basic ones which is the use of silica fume okay so how is silica fume used in producing high strength concrete okay incorporating mineral admixtures especially silica fume is another key factor in producing high strength concrete so it is one of the mineral admixture which is specially used in high strength concrete okay due to the small size in the order of few nanometers silica fume can easily pack into the gaps among cement particles to form a much denser microstructure so silica fume on account of its very small uh, nanometer size okay uh, it has the ability to uh, you know go into the gaps among the cement particles and therefore give a much denser uh, microstructure basically okay due to its highly reactive amorphous nature silica fume can react with calcium hydroxide ch okay and water uh, to produce uh, this one uh, produce secondary csh which is very efficient in filling up large capillary spaces this help uh, this helps in improving uh, the density of the microstructure and reducing the porosity of concrete so uh, basically uh, what is the role of admixture okay so they uh, there are some compounds okay which uh, don't directly react with water okay but they react with calcium hydroxide which is produced from cement hydration and you, uh, the, you know they react with the calcium hydroxide in the presence of water for forming uh, CSH okay calcium secondary calcium silicate hydrate which is secondary okay because the primary is from the cement itself so therefore it is uh, those gels are very efficient in filling up large capillary spaces okay and this helps in improving the density of the microstructure also okay because they are filling up the capillary spaces and therefore it reduces the concrete porosity okay so that is of a very good utility okay Apart from that, uh, due to the reduction of Portlandite and permeability, okay, the penetration rate and amount of carbon dioxide, oxygen chloride, and moisture in the concrete are reduced. So because water tight, it it makes it water tight. Okay, the penetration, permeability, and intrusion of carbon dioxide, oxygen chloride, moisture, everything is this one uh, reduced. Okay, the po possibility for leaching or, or uh, you know. Uh, <coughs> the possibility for leaching alkali aggregate reaction ar okay and carbonation corrosion sulfate attack everything is reduced okay so various types of attacks is reduced because of a denser microstructure and thus it improves the overall durability of high strength concrete so the silica fume plays a very important role okay so now let us see the properties of high strength concrete okay so first is the workability okay so in the first region, if the slump is less than 20, uh, 21 centimeter, then the workability needs to be measured by slump test itself. So here the sand content can be comparable to normal concrete. Okay. And they use HRWR that is high range water reducer. That's why the slump is 
little less okay so consistency is evaluated using conventional slump test okay and often used in factory products okay uh, this type of uh, concrete is used uh, which is having slump less than 21 centimeter and in the second regime the high strength concrete which has a slump more than 24 centimeter uh, it has to be in that case it has to be measured by slump flow test okay so in that case the sand content is very high okay because it is it has to be a flow, flow uh, it has to it needs to have flowability characteristics okay so high sand content with air entrain okay entrain entrainment and hrwr that is the high dense water reducer and mineral admixtures low water binder material ratio okay because the definitely w by c or w by b ratio is very less in hsc so consistency is evaluated using slump flow okay often used in high flowability concrete including scc so in this type of concrete they use uh, this one the second regime okay so where the slump is more than 24 centimeter and it is measured by slump flow test if the uh, slump value is between 21 and 24 okay so if less than 21 it is slump slump test is used for measuring workability if more than 24 slump flow is used for measuring workability but if it is between 21 and 24 centimeter a judgment needs to be made on the basis of concrete properties okay so we have to take into account various properties and then find out which will be the best test for measuring the workability now let us see the air content okay entrainment of air tends to decrease the strength which is obvious in environments with cyclic freezing and thawing adequate air entrainment is needed for durability considerations okay Prescribed lower limits on air content is 2% if there is no freezing and thawing resistance required and it, it is a minimum 3% if freezing and thawing resistance is required. Okay? This value is dependent on the characteristic uh, compressive strength of concrete. Okay? So these are the parameters uh, which have to be kept in mind in HSC. Okay? Although we have studied basically it should be ideally between 4 to 10% but that is for normal. Okay? So in case of HSC, uh, if the air entrainment is more more high, it will very drastically reduce the strength, and its intended purpose will not be solved. Okay, but it should have minimum two percent if no freezing thawing resistance and three percent uh, for freezing thawing resistance require requirement. Okay, so that is sufficient. Now let us see the strength development and behavior under applied compressive load. Okay. The strength development of high strength concrete is much faster than that of normal strength concrete. As you can see here, the high strength concrete curve is much steeper as compared to the normal strength concrete. Uh, it is a plot between compressive strength and age. Okay, so as you can see, it is much steeper. So the strength time curve is steeper than normal concrete, as I just mentioned. Initial strength of high strength concrete is also higher than initial strength of normal strength concrete. Everything is higher than the normal ones okay the microstructure the stress strain behavior and failure modes under compression of high strength concrete hsc are quite different from those of normal strength concrete okay nsc so the microstructure stress strain behavior and failure modes all the three are quite different in case of hsc as compared to normal strength microstructure is different because as we discussed it is having more cement content mortar content so it is more uniform okay uh, hsc as compared to nsc the stress strain behavior just we discussed uh, the uh, this one hsc is having much more uh, higher uh, your steep okay it is much more steeper and the initial strength is also much higher than normal strength concrete so that is also different and failure mode is uh, defined in a sense which we'll we, uh, discuss in the coming slides failure mode is different because in higher strength concrete okay the failure uh, the cracking occurs through the aggregate okay so and it is also it is also a brittle failure in high strength concrete whereas we have studied in normal strength concrete uh, it is you know the crack propagates around the aggregates not through the aggregates okay and comparatively comparatively it is more ductile as compared to high strength the normal strength failure will be more ductile okay so we'll uh, discuss now okay so if we go to microstructure as you can see hsc is more homogeneous which i told you just now then nsc normal strength concrete due to the limitation of the maximum aggregate size okay and the increase of cement content so that played a very important role in the uniformity and homogeneity okay the extent of porosity in the transition zone is greatly reduced because lesser is the zone of transition and also uh, the space is mainly voids of nanometer scale is filled with silica okay 
silica film basically sometimes the existence of the transition zone is almost eliminated because their silica film is able to block every pore okay most of the capillary pores because of its nanometer size number of micro cracks in hsc high strength concrete associated with short term loading and sustained loading is significantly less than that in nsc okay so the micro cracks because of the you know uh, because of filling of the capillary pores through silica film micro cracks uh, number in hsc okay due to short term loading and sustained loading is significantly less as compared to no, no, uh, normal string concrete okay now if we study the failure mode okay we will see which i just discussed also that hsc usually has a vertical crack going through the aggregate and shows a more brittle mode of fracture and less volumetric dilation okay while for nsc the major crack usually passes around coarse aggregate as you can see in this picture tortuous and longer fracture path in nsc okay as you can also see it is self explanatory and transgranular type of fracture in hsc so lot of various sizes of grains okay uh, 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 the cracks will or, or the failure will go through various grains sizes okay in a brittle mode and through vertically okay not passing uh, around the aggregate okay so as you can see in this picture and the crack growth becomes more rapid okay and the concrete is more brittle than normal strength concrete okay so if you as you can see here the crack uh, in in case of uh, hsc the crack growth becomes more rapid okay because it is a brittle failure and the concrete is more brittle than normal strength concrete okay so uh, you know uh, the growth is very although it is high strength but uh, the growth of crack is very rapid okay the principles of subjects uh, such as fracture mechanics becomes more relevant in studying high strength concrete okay so because of its uh, crack rapid crack propagation and brittleness okay so uh, fracture mechanics subject okay is very uh, you know uh, its principles are very relevant in studying high strength concrete okay hsc okay so you know uh, why why construction uh, why, why what are the advantages basically of uh, construction done using high strength concrete okay what are its applicability okay applications what is usable utility so effectiveness of needle vibrator in hsc is less than that in normal concrete thus the spacing and time of vibration should be carefully chosen okay so because uh, it has a lower water stiffness ratio okay so the effectiveness of a needle vibrator in hsc is a little bit lower as compared to normal concrete therefore the spacing and time of vibration should be carefully chosen okay otherwise there is a chance of segregation okay bleeding is generally less because of low wc ratio surface should be protected against drying okay finishing and troweling could be difficult okay pumpability should be appropriately checked prior to construction so all of the factors are mainly because of lower w by b ratio which is less than equal to 0.3 okay now determining strength in hsc for quality control okay since other mineral admixtures are often used okay along with portland cement initial strength development could be slow okay so generally using cement it, it is a much steeper than normal one normal strength but if because we are using ad, mineral admixtures okay initial strength development could be little slow this can be accounted for in some manner by allowing quality control tests done at an age later than the normally used 28 days okay so 28 days that is after four weeks we use uh, we uh, do the quality control or the compressive strength test but uh, for hsc we can extend it up to 56 or 91 day that is uh, eight weeks okay or uh, your this one 13 weeks okay so this can be also done okay so yeah so various uh, various uh, ways can be used okay various ways can be used uh, through for measuring uh, the uh, various uh, changes can be done accordingly for performing the quality control test okay uh, as per the requirement and need okay so these are some of the things which we can uh, keep in mind basically okay so yeah so uh, comparing the strength from cubes with that in the actual structure is more difficult than for normal concrete because cube does not show uh, the propagation stress propagation uh, 
of an actual structure uh, that is the one of its uh, you know disadvantage okay as compared to the cylinder as as we all know so comparing the strength from cubes with that in the actual structure is little bit difficult as compared to the normal concrete the strength is more closely related to the stiffness of the machine and testing parameters okay so related based basically based on machine stiffness and testing parameters it is also related the strength and the failure can be very explosive because of the ductility uh, brittleness nature and therefore care should be taken to ensure proper appropriate safety checks while testing the hsc so all these factors need to be kept in mind okay now let us go to the durability factors so durability of hsc aggregates should be checked for reactivity as the cement content and therefore the alkali content is very generally high okay so aggregate should be checked for reactivity as cement content which basically contains calcium okay which is again an alkali okay it is very high okay so there is a chance of alkali aggregate reaction ar because of the dense pore structure carbonation may usually not be a problem okay because the density is more so intrusion will be less okay since hsc is often used in harsh environment though chloride ingress may not be a problem chlorides within concrete initially should be controlled so this check should be done okay cracking should be carefully controlled to ensure water tightness and durability against freezing and thawing so cracking should be you know carefully controlled okay basically for ensuring water tightness and durability okay against freezing and thawing okay so uh, these are some of the basic uh, this one uh, criteria which we should also keep in mind in nsc and fire resistance is an issue as movement of trapped moisture in hsc is difficult okay so because uh, you know heat is not able to go away okay so fire resistance is an issue okay because of the trap moisture okay it is not able to move easily okay because of the dense microstructure so designing using hsc how to you know how to carry go forward with the design okay using hsc so empirical equations for estimates of properties such as modulus of elasticity tensile bond shear strength are not valid okay an effort needs to be made to get this through experiments so the basic equations okay for estimates and properties basically for elastic modulus tensile bond shear strength which are mainly for normal strength concrete okay they are not valid for high strength concrete okay and therefore effort needs to be made for getting this through experimental findings okay lack of ductility of the concrete also needs to be factored in the design protocol so also because it is a brittle failure much brittle than normal concrete so this lack of ductility inside concrete also needs to be factored in okay during the design protocol okay so with this we come to the end of the seven week lecture okay and now let us go to the solve problems okay so the first question is in the context of reversing drum mixers okay consider the following statements okay the first statement the same opening is used to add the constituents and to discharge concrete okay statement 2 the drum rotates in one direction for mixing and in the opposite direction for discharging the mixed concrete choose the best alternative among the following both the statements are true one is true two is false one is false two is true both the statements are false so yeah so reversing drum mixture okay so in that case the same opening is used okay for the adding the constituents constituents as well as discharging the concrete and here the drum has two types of blades okay so one blade rotates in one direction for mixing and the other blade rotates in the opposite direction for discharging the mixed concrete okay so basically both the statements are true okay so the first statement will be uh, the right answer so as you can see both the statements are true second question in the context of adding water reducing admixtures in concrete consider the following statements statement 1 if water reducing admixtures are added earlier in the mixing process the mix will hold the slum for longer time and as a result less quantity of water reducing admixture will be required statement 2 if water reducing admixtures are added later in the mixing process the mix will not hold the slum for longer time and as a result more quantity of water reducing admixture will be required consider choose the best alternative among the following both are true one is true two is false one is false two is true both are false okay so if you remember uh, water reduce, uh, reducing admixture uh, using that in concrete uh, in that case the timing is important okay so 
if water reducing admixtures are added earlier in the mixing process the mix will hold the slum for longer time that is true but but as a result more quantity of water reducing admixture will be required not less okay so one is false okay and similarly if water reducing admixtures are added later in the mixing process the mix will not hold the slum for longer time that is true but less quantity of water reducing admixture will be required not more okay so both are the two is also false okay one is also false two is also false the first part is correct but the second part is wrong okay in both the statements so both will be false therefore so you know uh, both the statements are false or the fourth option will be the correct one so as you can see both the statements are false third question in the context of continuous mixers consider the following statements statement one the materials are continuously fed into the mixture at different rate as the concrete is discharged Statement 2, the drum is tilted upwards uh, towards the load opening, okay? So, uh, choose the base alternative among the following, okay? Both the statements are true. Statement 1 is true and 2 is false. 1 is false and 2 is true. Both the statements are false, okay? So, in case of continuous mixtures, if you remember, uh, the materials are continuously fed, okay, into the mixture, that is true. But it is at the same rate, constant rate, not at a different rate, okay? So, one is false, okay? And if you see, if you go through the second statement, it is written that drum is tilted upwards, okay? So, that is wrong because continuous mixtures is like non-tilting mixture, okay? So, that means uh, it should be parallel, horizontal. So, you know, it should not be tilted upwards towards the loading opening, okay? So, it will be horizontal. So, two is also false, okay? So, both the statements are false, okay? So, the fourth option will be the correct one so as you can see both the statements are false okay fourth question in the context of pre-mixing okay so in the context of pre-mixing consider the following statements statement one if porous or lightweight aggregates are used then it is recommended that 1 by 10 to 1 by 5 of total mixing water be pre-mixed with the aggregates for 2 to 4 minutes statement two pre-mixing helps in preventing the loss of cement grains that could be wasted in the pores or of porous or lightweight aggregates choose the best alternative among the following both are true one is true two is false one is false two is true both are false so in case of pre-mixing if you remember uh, in the when porous or lightweight aggregates are used okay it is recommended to uh, you know mix half or two by three uh, or two, two third of the total water not 1 by 10 or 1 by 5 okay so one is one is false and as regards to second statement pre-mixing helps in preventing the loss of cement grains okay that is true that could be wasted in the pores of porous or lightweight aggregates okay so that's why that is basically why uh, pre-mixing of porous or lightweight aggregates are used uh, with that of uh, more mortar so that uh, it prevents the loss of cement grains which are wasted in the pores okay so two is true so one is false and two is true basically the third option is correct so as you can see the third option is correct one is false two is true fifth question in the context of short critting consider the following statements statement one sheer strength uh, of concrete has a critical role to play when concreting is carried out in layers okay and statement two uh, workmanship plays a critical role in quality control of short critting process okay so choose the base alternative among the following both the statements are true one is true two is false one is false two is true both the statements are false okay so if you remember in short critting one of the main parameters is shear strength okay that is the sliding failure and okay that is more important when it is carried out in layers because more it will be the layers more is the chance of you know getting segregation and more is the layer chance of slide sliding failure okay so that that's why shear strength of concrete is a critical role to play when short critting is carried out in layers okay and second statement that is workmanship okay so that is also plays a viral by a very critical role uh, apart from the materials and the you know uh, mix uh, mix conditions okay so workmanship or basically the nozzle men they play a critical role in quality control of short critting process so what the statements are correct so both the statements are true the first statement is correct so both the statements are true sixth question consider the following factors in the context of mixing concrete one short working time to long long unloading time three ready mix concrete for remote sites 
which of the following correctly identifies factors suitable for conti using continuous mixers? Only 1 and 2, only 3 and 4, only 1, 2 and 3, only 1, 2 and 4. So, if you remember about continuous mixers, okay, so they are basically used for, for conditions where there is short working time, long unloading time, and basically are used for remote sites, okay. So, it is not suitable for ready mix concrete, okay. So, 1, 2, and 4, okay. So, these, they correctly identify factors, okay, uh, suitable for using continuous mixer. So, the uh, fourth option, that is only 1, 2, and 4 is the correct one. So, as you can see, only 1, 2, and 4, okay. Seven question, in the context of high strength concrete, consider the following statements. Statement one, the crack propagation in such concrete may occur through the coarse aggregates. Statement two, bleeding in high strength concrete is more than normal strength concrete. Choose the best alternative among the following. Both the statements are true. Statement one is true and statement two is false. Statement one is false and statement two is true. Both the statements are false. So if you remember high strength concrete, okay, the main difference with normal concrete is that high strength concrete the crack propagation is occurred vertically through the coarse aggregate okay? that is they occur the crack occur through the coarse aggregate okay and the uh, crack has a major crack there is a major crack propagation so first statement is true okay but high strength concrete has a very less water binder ratio that is less than equal to 0.3 okay whereas normal strength has between 0.4 to 0.6 okay so because on account of lesser water strength so lesser water cement ratio or binder ratio so therefore the bleeding will also be lesser okay so it is it will not be more so two is false okay so one is true two is false basically the second statement is correct okay so statement one is true and statement two is false okay eighth question in the context of high strength concrete consider the following statements statement one in high strength concrete selection of coarse aggregate is a critical parameter as transition zone and motor phase are both fairly strong okay Statement 2, in high strength concrete, the criteria for choosing coarse aggregate includes strain, grading, and alkali reactivity. Choose the best alternative among the following. Both the statements are true. Statement 1 is true and 2 is false. Statement 1 is false and 2 is true. Both the statements are false. Okay. So, if you remember, in high strength concrete, the selection of coarse aggregate is a critical parameter. Okay. Because here, the transition zone and motor phase both are fairly strong. That is why the, the strength of uh, the difference between strength of uh, mortar and the coarse aggregate is very narrow okay so that means uh, that is achieved only in, only by reducing the size of coarse aggregate therefore selection of coarse aggregate is a critical parameter so one is true and uh, as regards to this one the criteria for choosing there are basically three criteria if you remember one is strength one is grading and third is alkali reactivity okay so two is also true okay so both the statements are true so basically the first option is the correct one okay both the statements are true so as you can see both the statements are true nine question in the context of high strength concrete consider the following statements okay statement one strength of concrete tends to increase okay as the maximum size of aggregates increases statement two aggregates used in making high strength concrete should prefer preferably have high crushing strength okay choose the base alternative among the following both the statements are true Statement 1 is true and 2 is false. Statement 1 is false and 2 is true. Both the statements are false. Okay. So if you remember high strength concrete, the uh, the strength of uh, the, the size of aggregate has to be, uh, you know, limited. Okay. It should be less than 20 mm because more is the size of aggregate, lesser will be the strength. Okay. So therefore, uh, the strength of concrete tends to uh, not increase uh, or decrease as the maximum size of aggregates increases okay so it uh, the strength of aggregate will decrease with the maximum size of aggregate increase in maximum size of aggregate not increase okay so one is false and two aggregate used in making high strength concrete uh, yes they should prefer preferably have high crushing strength so this is one of the criteria for choosing aggregate okay this is also one of the important criteria so two is true so th therefore one is false and two is true okay so the third option is correct okay so statement one is false and statement two is true okay now uh, the last question 10 question so in the context of using silica film for the purpose of high strength concrete consider the following statements statement one silica film helps in improving overall overall durability of high strength concrete statement two silica film not only produces secondary csh gel but also packs into the gaps among the cement cement particles because it is much finer than cement choose the base alternative among the following 
both the statements are true one is true two is false one is false two is true both the statements are false okay so if you remember the use of silica film so silica film is one of the major constituent uh, like one of the important constituent apart from the standard ones for the purpose of high strength concrete because it ha helps to improve the overall durability of the high strength concrete by filling up the pores okay pores or capillary pores basically uh, in uh, this one uh, in the concrete okay and they are not they are pro uh, they, they produce CSH okay uh, by reacting with CH and water uh, basically the secondary CSH okay and also they pack into the gaps owing to their size nanometer nanometer size so they are able to pack into the gaps among the cement particles okay because they are much finer that is they are in the size of nanometer whereas in the cement particles are in the size of microns or micrometer okay? so they are not only producing secondary CSH but also filling packing the gaps among the part cement particles owing to much finer cement okay so both are true okay both the statements are true so first option is correct both the statements are true so as you can see both the statements are true both the statements are true okay so with this we come to the end of uh, today's class okay so this is the second last class and next week will be the our last class and i also think like you have uh, the exam next week so best of luck for that also the written exam so yeah so if you have any question you can ask okay so if it is everything is fine so yeah so we can sign off then uh, have have a great day and best of luck for the exam so we shall meet again next week uh, for the last class so till then bye